If you're in the mood to sew a cute and simple everyday dress, I have you covered in this video with Simplicity 8551. I'll be sewing the main bodice and the skirt length of view A with the sleeves of view B and C. This pattern features pretty pin tucks and a front top button, as well as waist ties, elastic at the end of the sleeves, and of course, pockets. The fabric that I'm using in this video is a dark denim chambray by ThreadyMade. I hope you join me for this sew along. Let's get started. Here is the wrong side of one of my front bodice pieces and I'm going to start by preparing the dart. I've transferred the dart from the pattern piece and now I'm going to fold it in half and pin through one dart leg and out the other. And I'll do this for both front darts. Then we'll sew the darts from the outside edge to the point, leaving thread tails at the point so you can tie them in knots. And then press those darts down toward the bottom of the bodice. I've marked the lines for the pin tucks on the wrong side of my fabric. If you'd like, you can also mark from the right side of the fabric. For each of these lines, I'm going to snip into the fabric along the outer edges by about an eighth of an inch. Then I'll turn the material to the right side, and starting with the outermost set of snips, I'm going to bring those snips together and press that folded edge. And I'll just check underneath that when folded, both of those lines are on top of each other. Then I'll top stitch this folded edge with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So now we have our first pin tuck. And I'll go ahead and repeat for my next set of snips and lines. Aligning those snips and pressing that folded edge. And then sewing at 3 8 and repeat for the two remaining pin tucks. Then press all of those pin tucks away from the center front. And then we'll base the pin tucks in place along the upper edge about a quarter of an inch away from the neckline, and also base them along the bottom edge as well. And repeat to create all of the pin tucks for your remaining front bodice piece. Before I place my two front bodice pieces right sides together and sew that center front seam, I'm going to finish the raw edges of both pieces separately. Now that those center edges are finished, I'll place the front bodice pieces right sides together and we'll pin from the bottom to the large dot transferred from your pattern piece. Then we'll sew from the bottom of the bodice to the large dot back stitching to secure. And once that's sewn, I'll press the seam open. For the tie piece, fold it in half right sides together and give it a press. And repeat for both tie end pieces. Then we're going to start sewing from one end, sewing with a 3 8 inch seam allowance horizontally and then pivoting the stitching to sew vertically along the open end again with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Do that for both tie pieces and leave the opposite short end open. Then turn both of those tie pieces right side out. And then press both of those tie pieces flat. Here is the right side of my back bodice piece. I've transferred the small dots from the pattern piece to the bottom edges of the back bodice piece so that I know where my tie ends will be placed. Take the raw edges of each tie piece and align the bottom edge of the tie piece with the small dot. So the tie piece will be 5 eighths of an inch away from the bottom edge of the back bodice. And the raw edge of the tie piece will align with the raw edge of the bodice and pin in place. Repeat for the other side for the other tie piece. and then baste your ties in place. Now for the back bodice piece, I'm going to finish the shoulder edges separately, as well as the side edges. And I'll repeat for the shoulders and sides of the front bodice piece as well. Now I'll place my front and back pieces right sides together, and I'll pin the shoulders and the side seams. Then I'll sew all of my seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press the seams open. 
Fold your loop piece in half right sides together. And we're going to sew the longer raw edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. And turn the loop right side out and give it a press. And then fold that loop so that the raw edges are right next to each other. And we're going to place the raw edges at the center front opening of the front bodice. Aligning the vertical raw edges and placing that loop 3 eighths of an inch below the top raw edge. Then we'll take that to the sewing machine and base to the loop in place. Apply interfacing to the wrong sides of your front facing pieces and then place these pieces right sides together. Pin from the bottom edge to the large dot transferred from your pattern piece. I've transferred my large dot here just using a pin. And now I'll sew this lower center section with a 5 8 inch seam allowance backstitching at the dot to secure. And I've gone ahead and pressed that center seam open. Now I'm going to finish those side and bottom edges. And then I'll take it to the ironing board and press those finished edges to the wrong side along those side and bottom edges by a quarter of an inch. And then I'll take it to the sewing machine and stitch close to those finishing stitches all the way around the side and bottom edges. Place your facing and the center front opening right sides together, aligning the raw edges on one side, pinning in place from the top to the dot. Then we'll sew from the top to the dot, backstitching at the dot to secure. And then once you have the first half of that facing applied, pin the facing in place along the opposite edge. And then we'll sew this side in place from the top to the dot, once again backstitching to secure. Then we can turn this facing to the inside of the garment, give those opening seams a good press. Then along the top edges of the opening, pin the facing to the top of the bodice on both sides and baste those edges in place. Then I'll turn the bodice inside out and using a needle and thread, I'm going to tack the bottom of the facing to the seam allowances on both sides. Apply interfacing to the wrong sides of your front and back band pieces, and then place these pieces right sides together. Matching the notched edges and pin in place. Sew with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press your seams open. Place the lower edge of the band right sides together with the front neckline. And we'll pin it in place so that the front band extends beyond the center front by 3 eighths of an inch. Doing that on both sides. And then continue pinning the band to the neckline matching your seams and your center backs. And then we'll sew the band to the neckline all the way around with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Then we can trim that seam and clip the curves. and then press that seam allowance up toward the band all the way around. Place your remaining uninterfaced band pieces right sides together 
and pin the shoulder seams. And then sew those seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press the seams open just as we did for the interfaced pieces. And then take it to the ironing board and press the outer edges to the wrong side by 3 8 of an inch all the way around. Now we can place the neckband and the facing right sides together from the bottom of the center front curve and all around the top edges. Then we're going to sew those neckband pieces together all the way around with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, starting from that folded edge of the facing all the way around the top edges and stopping on the other side at the opposite folded edge of the facing. And then we can trim this new seam and clip the curves. Then turn the facing to the inside and give those upper edges a good press. Now we'll take those inner raw edges of the facing that we pressed to the inside and place that folded edge over the seam so that it just covers the stitching line and pin in place from the outside of the garment. Continue tucking and pinning all the way around. Now I have my neckline seam pinned all around the outside with the pins catching that inner fold of the facing all the way around. We're going to sew very slightly above that seam line all the way around. Periodically checking underneath to make sure that you are catching that inner fold as you go. To prepare for easing the sleeve into the armhole, we're going to baste from notch to notch. I'm going to be using about a 3 8 inch seam allowance, leaving thread tails on both sides so I have threads to pull for easing. Do this for both sleeves. Once you've basted the sleeve cap, we can place the sleeve right sides together with itself. Sew this underarm seam with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then finish the raw edges. Do this for both sleeves. And then turn your sleeve right side out and turn the bodice inside out. Place the sleeve into the corresponding armhole so that the materials are right sides together. Match the underarm seams and the notches and pin in place. I'm also going to match the dot at the top of my sleeve cap with my shoulder seam and pin in place. Then I can start pulling the basting stitches so that the sleeve fits from notch to dot. And once it fits, pin in place. And do the same to ease in the other half of the sleeve cap. Now we can sew the sleeve into the armhole with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then finish the raw edges. <laughs> to form the elastic casings for the bottom of the sleeve, we're going to take the sleeves to the ironing board and press up those lower raw edges to the wrong side by 3 quarters of an inch. Once you have the lower edges pressed to the wrong side by three quarters of an inch, we're also going to press again those raw edges to the wrong side by a quarter of an inch so that we can tuck those raw edges underneath for a clean finish and pin in place all the way around with that quarter inch fold tucked underneath. Then we can edge stitch close to that upper fold all the way around, leaving a gap of about one and a half inches so that we can insert the elastic. I've cut two pieces of 3 8 inch wide elastic using the elastic guide pattern piece. Now I'll attach a safety pin to one short end of the elastic and draw it through the casing through the opening I left in my stitching. Then I'll 
Once it comes out the other side, overlap the two ends by about half of an inch and stitch back and forth to secure. Then we can pull the elastic entirely into the casing and stitch that opening closed following the original stitching line. And repeat all of these steps to complete the sleeve on the opposite side. And then to finish off the bodice construction, we can attach the button at the center front, sewing it directly across from your button loop. Now for both the front and back skirt pieces, I'm going to finish the side seams separately, both sides for both front and back. I'm also going to finish the entire outer edges of all four pockets. Now I'll place one of my pockets right sides together with one of my side seams, matching the notches and pin in place. Doing this on both side seams for both the front and back skirt pieces. Then we'll sew each pocket to each side seam with the 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then open out each pocket over its seam allowance and give those pocket seams a good press. For the pockets for the front skirt piece, we're going to be understitching. So once you've pressed the pocket over its seam, we're going to sew the pocket to the seam allowance from top to bottom, stitching close to that original seam line doing that for both front skirt pockets. Now place the front and back skirt pieces right sides together and their pockets. And I'm going to use my pocket piece to mark the large dots onto the fabric. Now I'll pin from the top to the first dot and then from the second dot to the bottom of the skirt as well as pinning around the pocket. Now I'll start sewing with a 5 8 inch seam allowance from the top of the skirt to the first dot, then pivot my stitching to sew around the pockets, and then once again pivot the stitching at the second dot all the way to the bottom of the skirt. Do this for both side seams. Now we're going to sew basting stitches all around the tops of the front and back skirt. Using the longest stitch on your machine with about a 3 8 inch seam allowance, remembering to leave thread tails at the beginning and end of your stitching, stitch from one seam straight across to the other. And then for the other skirt piece, you'll start a fresh set of basting stitches to do the same thing on both sides. Now we can begin attaching the skirt to the bottom of the bodice. First, making sure that those tie pieces are up and out of the way. Then we'll place the top of the skirt right sides together with the bottom of the bodice. Pin the pieces together, first matching the center front, center back, and the side seams. Then we can start pulling the basting stitches to fit the skirt to the bottom of the bodice from side seam to center notch. Once those sections fit together and the gathers are distributed evenly, pin in place. Continue pulling the basting stitches in the same way for each section around the entire waistline. Now we can sew the skirt to the bodice all around the waistline with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then finish the raw edges. Now for the bottom of the dress, I went ahead and finished the raw edges all the way around. Then I folded those finished edges to the wrong side by one inch, and now I'm going to edge stitch close to those finishing stitches all the way around the bottom of the dress. Give everything a final press and the dress is complete. Thank you for watching this sew along.
Make sure you check out the rest of my video library for more great sewing tutorials and I'll see you in the next video.